is a phenomena in a more metallic form of water. So, discharge uh, and like that. And uh, this one I captured because emergency gate we cannot capture. For a service gate, I captured some photos. In the video also I have. Uh, just uh, at the time of track opening, uh, we can judge how the water rushes and what activity goes on in the chamber. And uh, if uh, you go by university, uh, he has mentioned in his book that uh, forces are maximum when it gate is cracked open at 20% of its height. And same is true for closing as well as opening. And uh, <coughs> what are the perils and consequences of this crack opening? Uh, if there are uh, forces exceeding the our design or uh, requirement, naturally there will be hazardous consequences. I listed uh, one by one on each uh, component what will be the consequences. First one is a gate lift. Your gate lift is subjected to tremendous uh, pressure, force, whatever it will be. And uh, your all joints, nerve walls, uh, rivets, all would get, all would get uh, unduly stretched. Uh, track formation will be there and uh, track propagation will be there. And uh, for another instant, that instant get may be survived, may be survived, but for another instant it will fail. Uh, rubber seals. Uh, for uh, rubber seal in close condition and at a full load, uh, the rubber seals are uh, fully compressed, uh, in compressed, in fully compressed state. And in that condition, if you cra crack open, then uh, impulsive shear load will be applied, and instantly your rubber seal will give up. And uh, it may um, block the gate in slot also, or whatever it may be. There will be permanent set deformation of cracks in the rubber seals like that. And uh, accelerated, uh, accelerated corrosion of uh, your seal, uh, ceiling plate or uh, gate components will be there. Two minutes only. Yeah. So these are some of the photographs. You see seal is damaged. Likewise, uh, seal beam. Seal beam uh, will have accelerated corrosion and uh, cavitation. Rollers of a gate will get damaged, chatter patterns will form, guide brackets will get removed. Uh, these are some photos where guide brackets are removed. Seal is also broken. Wall plates, wall plate will leave their position. Wire will get unduly stretched. If they got uh, cross their uh, elastic limit, then they are permanently damaged. They will provide also a weak spot for failure. Hoisting arrangement. Uh, from your hoist, your shaft, gear, skis, bearing, foundation, all these are subjected to uh, severe conditions and they will show you peculiar failure patterns. Uh, same is the case for hoist supporting portal, whatever it may be, uh, concrete or uh, steel. This is the case of uh, concrete structure. Crack opening is one of the reasons. Other reasons may be there, but this is one of the reasons. Uh, air vent and sluice wall pipes. You see, leakages are uh, abundantly available. And uh, they occur in particular fashion at some length. Then, conduct opening and flow. Uh, after track opening, it will be disturbed. Then, uh, get catapulting may occur. Cavitation will be there in severe form. Vibrations and resonance of gate will be there. Uh, and these are some real observations. Uh, so I am not going for that. Just one uh, remedy. Uh, then if uh, this is the condition, what is the remedy for uh, achieving balance condition? I thought uh, from my experience that uh, nobody goes uh, below to reach the Service service wall to open that. Because conditions are very dismal. Uh, actually, I invite all of you, when you go your own dam, um, go through the well and reach to uh, get, and you will judge what are the conditions. 
Even if uh, it is in working state, operator will say, I will uh, forget, like that. Uh, other uh, animals are also there, snakes, reptiles, like that. A danger of falling debris is there. Then uh, it came to my mind, why not fill the chamber from top only? That may be possible and very simple, cheaper solution. Normally, we, we have one pump on this dam. At least one pump we have. One or, one or many good colleagues. And uh, we can use only some additional piping. And from top itself, we can assign 510 minutes. And from top itself, we can uh, fill the chamber. Any questions? Just one or two questions, please. Talk of service, emergency gate, talk of service gate also. What you will find, it starts with crack opening only. And up to certain limit, it's a crack only. Yeah. Say up to almost six inches or one. Uh, whatever problems you have told can be uh, contained by selecting the bottom ladder position and a provision of a lip. No, uh, girder, your girder is fixed. That is according to your level. No, girder position, you have to design a structure. That is fixed. You can design the structure accordingly. Uh, you have already designed. You have made all arrangements. But because of our maintenance practice, say, or anything, uh, at the time of emergency, emergency, nobody goes there. Nobody dares to go there. Everybody tries to save his life. Even uh, you can say my head, some mark is there. It is due to going there. Number of times I go went there and I fallen somewhere and I got permanent working. Mr. Deva, can you elaborate? There was an arrangement of uh, filling the downstream in Uri project. See, uh, sir, one minute. I got. I also got some funny questions. That uh, one person said uh, we rotate our um, turbine reversely and we fill this chamber. But uh, maybe it may be possible or not possible. If there is water available, you can you know, rotate you know. See, one, one person said, we call water tanker and fill that cavity, chamber, like that. Instead of sluice wall, there yeah. is a provision of filling in wall now. Yeah. So, if you provide a filling in wall at yeah. some location or on some of yeah. the horizontal girder, yeah. so that problem is solved because it is automatically, by lifting it can uh, be open and then uh, you don't require to go down to that location of for opening. But even though automatic, you have to ensure it is working at the time of your distress condition. Yeah, it works fine. Yeah, there is no problem. Next speaker is Tom Peters. We will just speak as yes, paper is. My name is Tom Beters of Deltaris. Uh, we developed this project uh, together with Sanjay for the Dutch uh, funding agency. Uh, it is a pilot project we are about to start in Karnataka State. Uh, First, something about Deltaris. Deltaris is a Dutch-based research organization um, with about 800 uh, employees. Um, we have offices in Delft and Utrecht, but we work also internationally. About 30% of our turnover is international work. And to support that work, we have offices uh, in the USA, Brazil, India, Singapore, Indonesia. So a number of small offices around the world to support our contact with our stakeholders and clients. <laughs> So now something uh, on the dam safe project. Um, so this is a pilot project in which we are going to demonstrate a number of innovative uh, technologies on a concrete case, a dam and a reservoir in Karnataka State. Um, and these stone technologies are uh, satellite imaging, so satellite, use of satellites for uh, studying the behavior of the reservoir and, and the dam. Uh, Dam uh, safety analysis software, uh, an online monitoring system, and view software, which is in the software to integrate all the results of the monitoring. 
And this project will be carried out uh, by the Taris, but in cooperation with a number of uh, companies which are listed here. So Skytio, it's a, a Dutch company, Royal Agricom, and I, it's also a Dutch company, and Impresas is a Spanish uh, company. Um, Skygeo is a company on satellite imaging, uh, Royal Agricom on uh, monitoring system, so actual field monitoring, and Impresas on uh, dam safety risk assessment. And this consortium is so funded by the Partners for Water program. This is a, a Dutch program for this kind of uh, in initiatives, and it will fund a part of the, of the cost, and the other part of the cost is funded by the partners themselves. So I'm now going into the technologies that we want to, to, uh, to use uh, in this project, uh, briefly of course, uh, and then I will summarize and end. And, and, and yeah, it is a starting project, so uh, unfortunately I will not be able to show you actual results, but I hope to be showing these results next year. So one of the technologies is uh, PS INSA, so point scattering uh, INSA radar. This is a radar system on a satellite platform that circles around the Earth regularly and sends signal to the Earth and receives reflection. And uh, this uh, technology looks at the phase difference between the sent signal and the reflected signal. Um, and it is possible to measure very accurately small displacements of the, of the Earth's surface. And that is why this is interesting technology, because you can derive defo deformation information from that technology. So what are the advantages of the technology? It is high precision, and it's also you can, these images are large, so you can scan a whole area with one image. Yeah. It's no, no site access required, no hardware required, and it gives you a, a it can give you a high resolution uh, uh, information. There are also, of course, limitations. Um, for example, the availability of, uh, of radar images, uh, etc. So there are also some limitations. Uh, this is an example of a dam in the USA, where on the left side you see uh, the results of, uh, of INSAR, and on the right side you see the results of, uh, of the compare of total uh, total. Uh, in situ total stations, so it's a uh, field measurement system, and you can see that they compare very well. And but of course, the big difference is that you get a lot more information of the dam in, in the situation over here. And the results of this survey uh, by PS Inser give you information on the uh, deformation of this dam in millimeters per year. So this information can be used to see <coughs> where there's not much uh, deformation and areas where there is a lot of deformation. And then you can use this information to do inspections here, visual inspections, to see what is going on. Okay, this is one technology. The second technology is uh, dam safety risk assessment. Uh, this is uh, provided by uh, Impresas and uh, Jessica, who is here somewhere. Uh, over here, we'll go into that uh, this afternoon. So I invite you to, to see that meeting. So I will skip this a little bit uh, because of time. But it is a dam safety risk assessment. Um, now I'm talking about, we're going to install an online monitoring system uh, consisting of monitoring the surface water levels, uh, monitoring stations in the dam to measure deformation, uh, also upstream water level measurements, uh, weather stations, and this is all online, so it's, we get real-time information from the monitoring system. And what we fuse software, which stands for Forecasting Evaluation Warning System software, and it is a platform that uh, is very capable of integrating a lot of data sources into it, and also run automatically a number of models. And that is the, the strong, and then visualize the results. And these results give the information to the decision makers to base their decisions upon. So, about talking about monitoring, uh, we're talking about uh, instrumenting dams. Um, 
like we have here an example of the Netherlands where we installed uh, instrumentation in these dikes. Um, in this case, uh, it is measurement of deformation and uh, water pressure. And we combine that information with numerical uh, analysis. And what is then the output of such a, such a, uh, such a, such a thing? Um, for example, here you see a, a canal and another canal with uh, a view of the technologies, of course, we want to apply. But the question, of course, is what, what do we want to achieve with that? And that, that is shown in this, uh, this diagram. So here you see the technologies. So the INSAR imaging, the in-situ monitoring system, uh, dam safety risk analysis, and the view software. And these are the objectives we want to achieve. So we want to achieve uh, real-time optimization of the reservoir performance. So we, we can do forecasting of reservoir inflow. Of course, it's known what is going out of the reservoir, so we can <coughs> forecast how much water is in the reservoir. And we use that to optimize the performance of the reservoir. And these are the technologies we are going to use for that, so monitoring and the view software. The second objective is to optimize them uh, operation and maintenance. And we do use these technologies, so INSAR, in situ monitoring and dam safety uh, assessment software to achieve that goal. And the third goal is real-time dam safety and flood risk forecasting, and we use in situ monitoring and software to achieve that goal. So I hope to show you some results next year when we have performed the project in cooperation with uh, Karnataka Water Resources Department. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you very uh, Very few millimeters. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, either the settlement or deflection or whatever. Is, I mean, uh, what is the... Uh, the, the it has to do with the position of the satellite towards what you are measuring. So it will give you an indication of relative, and then it will give you an information on deformation, but you have to, you need additional information to interpret the, 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 the measurement. And it is on millimeter position. No, because, uh, I mean, measuring in millimeters I mean, is a very tall order. In the sense that, uh, I mean, through satellite we are not getting so accurate information. Yes, it's, it, that is possible with this technology. Um, if it is, I mean, that's very good. Yeah, yeah, but it's, of course, it's, it's a reflection of the surface. Yeah, so it's, uh, it, if you have a high resolution, it's something like 30 by 30 meters. And there you get this information. So if, if so it's about what is the resolution and what is the accuracy. So accuracy is in the millimeter order uh, for relative, but of course the information uh, is uh, the resolution is, is limited to this 30 by 30 meters. So you get a reflection from a surface of 30 by 30 meters. So that is a limitation. So it, it needs so it needs uh, an additional information to interpret what it really means. Okay. What are the data requirements uh, for the broad uh, forecasting and the uh, last one? Data requirement. Yeah. What data do you need? Uh, real time. Uh, for this, you need you need of course uh, if you want an, an accurate forecast, you need uh, measurements and forecasting of the inflow of the water in the reservoir because that's the loading of the dam, and then you need measurements of the dam. To uh, measure, to forecast the response of the dam. So, what will the will the dam? How will the dam respond to the loading? <coughs> we need measurements and numerical models to forecast. Only measurements of uh, inflow and uh, the dam uh, uh, parameters. Inflow data you require. Yeah, the, the data of course will give you an impression on the now, but we want to forecast a couple of days ahead. And that's why you need the number of the models. How far uh, you can forecast uh, 78 hours or uh, 72 uh, it, it depends. It depends all, because, of course, you know, a forecast has a certain uncertainty. And so, uh, depending on how well 
you know the situation, so all the characteristics of the reservoir and the dam, and, and how well you have your measurement system, your uncertainty will become less, and then you can forecast better. The questions are in real-time forecast? Yes. What, what will be the exact input that will be provided by PSNs or satellite The exact input? Input. It will provide some input to forecasting system? Yeah, the right meaning? Yeah, so what will be the exact input? The, the input will be uh, uh, these measurements. Measurement of? Hmm? Uh, measurement of what? The measurement of deformation of these uh, <coughs> parts of the dam and the whole reservoir. The formation of dam will be connected to forecast forecasting. Yeah, it will be used to interpret, uh, to interpret the data. And yeah, this is also a, a new part, of course, uh, in, in the whole uh, system. And you use that information. Is there one question there? Yeah. But for example, for, for uh, real-time safety uh, forecasting, and this is the, low, the frequency is too low for the, for the satellite. Okay, thank you. I think if uh, there is any question, then you can have a discussion at the other key times or... Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Convention. But we GMW always believe that necessity is the mother of customized solution. Very good morning to all of you. I'm Avinash Thakur and accompanied by my managing director, Mr. Omkar Singh and Mr. Devinder Singh. I would like to give a complete presentation on his behalf. Before starting my presentation, I would like to thank Central Water Commission and UGVNL for giving us such a nice platform to express ourselves. Yeah, From the first fact, it's very important to talk about an experience of the farm. And with an experience of more than four, four decades in this industry, we have executed more than 90 power projects that include coal, gas, and nuclear waste that include uh, ranking from 110 megawatt to 2000 megawatt. We have commissioned more than 30, 35 hydro projects ranking from 5 megawatt to 1200 megawatt. We have recently commissioned this study project, which is of 1200 megawatt in CKM. We are probably said that we are exporter of hydromechanical equipment that includes gates, wires, crash net cleaning machines, and traveling bank skins, and commissioned more than 50 mechanisms till date. We are a firm who always believe in delivering what we have committed, and, with, and for fulfilling your commitment, you need a strong manufacturing setup. And with a combined area of more than 1 lakh square meter, we had five manufacturing facilities in India. And these are some of the glimpses of our manufacturing facility quality. We, we always believe that the biggest marketing strategy for us to give a quality product to our customers. And for that, we are ISO 9001-2015 uh, certified organization by TUV Austria. Then the most important thing for us that each product of ours is to assemble and undergo, undergo with a request testing facility before dispatch. And that helps us to give a reliable product and better services. These are, the, uh, these are photographs of our trash rack mechanism, which is to be uh, tested at the time in our shop before dispatch. We have created a complete wall pit of, with a dia of 6 meter and a depth of 10 meter for, for testing of such equipments. And the major agenda for today's presentation is the maximization of generation through effective trash management. And in this, we have taken uh, this Chiplima dam, which is of 22 megawatt. The biggest problem with this uh, project is the lower generation, and the reason is the trash. The trash, the project is suffering from the problem of panel weeds. These weeds are so thick and come and choke the trash tank panel. I still remember in the year of 2009 and 10, the first time I visited the site. I was standing on the intake, I have seen a soccer field in front of me. And what I did, I see a worker started walking on the field. I, was, I thought that he might fall in water, but he was very confident. He put his axe and started walking on this grass, and I was amazed. And then I saw he started walking like 100, 100 200 meters on those panel weeds and start doing manual plugging because there is no provision for any kind of trash handling mechanism in this project. And with a capacity of 72 megawatt, they are running in a generation of 16 to 18 megawatt. And if you see the bottom photograph, the trash rack panels, they are just completely choked because of the panel weeds. These are just the few problems. The biggest problem was 
standing in front of us, a giant sized Gendry pin which actually obstructs the movement of the machine. machine. If we, if we took up space, if we are providing a mechanism over there, that would either obstruct the movement of the entry or either obstruct the movement of trash entry mechanism. The trash entry panels are quite old and not aligned, so we have to replace them as well. And when we have gone through, we studied it and gave up our technical proposal. In that, we have, we have proposed to provide a new rails where the mechanism will work and the rails should be below 5.5 meters behind the existing rails so that it can undergo between the legs of a gantry. Then design and customize a trash handling mechanism that should suit the intake. It is very important that, you know what, other manufacturers in, in, in all over the world provide mechanism as well. But our specialization is in that we provide mechanism on existing intakes by making and doing necessary arrangement which suits the intake of a dam. Because if we see, the, when the dams have been constructed in like 1960, 1970s, there was no provision of trash packing, uh, handling mechanism or trash packing machine. So we, because we have in our, in our design, Customize it according to the requirement of intake. And for this, this is one of the provided where there are a lot of floating trash was there. So we provide grapper paint for lifting of such bulk trash. And then we provide a mechanism that should go be, travel between the legs of a gantry and do its combing. And the replacement of trash deck panel is being given proposal by us. And continuous monitoring system. If you see the first slide, the trash deck was not visible because the trash deck was underwater. So at the time of combing, it is very important that the machine should stop at a particular point and do the combing. Either if the positioning was not appropriate, either the grab bucket would uh, damage or the trash bar would damage. We provide proximity center uh, sensors in the bottom of the rail that stops the mechanism at a particular point and help the mechanism to do the combing. In the second photograph on the right of mine, if you see, <coughs> the grab is holding the trash and put it on the intake. In the third photograph, where you see the complete mechanism is to be controlled by a joystick with the worker. And the fourth one, there's a, uh, there's a uh, grapper gain which is having a reach of 14 meters, which can lift the trash from the river and put it on the intake. Results speaks louder than words. That's what we always believe in as well. So for that, we like to show the generation data before 2009, where there is no provision of trash tracking mechanism, and after 2009, where the mechanism has been installed. There is a huge amount of generation gain. If you see, the maximum they have achieved over the last 10 years was 151 million unit for the financial year of 2009 and 10. But after installation of this mechanism, the generation was double. In the year of 2010 and 11, it was maximized as 292.083 million units. And the mechanism took out its cost within a span of six months. The first scenario when we are start making those graphical representative, it looks like a cricket score where there is a steady start in the beginning and then there is an acceleration in the end. But this, uh, unfortunately, this is the generation data where the blue bars, if you see, this is the generation data where there is no provision of trash track cleaning machine. And the orange one is a signal where the installation of trash track cleaning machine has done, raises the generation. And this data is, is taken from the official website of OHPC. When there is performance, there is appreciation as well. And most of the time, when I, I used to tell that there is a generation because of the mechanism, we, uh, the, the, we have to tell the ex technicality of it. But this time, we are lucky that OHPC has officially mentioned this thing in their own website that installation of trash track and handling mechanism has maximized the generation up to 254.42 million units in the year of 2010 and 11 and considered this to, to be one of their biggest achievements for that year. And these are the only one. If you see the mechanism, all the mechanisms are different and the challenges are different. If you see this mechanism, it's a Chuka hydrolytic project where again there is no provision and of trash track handling mechanism and it's a B-shaped intake. So it's semi-circular in nature and because of that, the, the movement of the mechanism is very difficult. We have made specifically fabricated rails for that so that and we did modification in the LD wheels of, so that the machine will also move circular and you know what, in, in this mechanism, it is very important the positioning of the mechanism. So once the machine should stop at a particular point and do the combing. If the, if, and in the same scenario, we did the same thing. We provide sensors to the machine, the machine, the, when the sensor detects this is the positioning that the, the trash tracks are, it does the uh, 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 combing and cleans the trash track panels. <coughs> this mechanism which we have uh, uh, installed in Chuka, installed in 2009, and 
we have like seven to eight years has gone and the machine is still giving a very good performance and taking out trash, like 30 numbers of trash trolleys in a single day at the time of rainy season, where the debris was used. And this project specifically, they have a log boom barrier as well for uh, stopping of those logs. But just at the time of rainy season, when the flood comes, that log boom barrier just destroyed. And it happens twice in Chuka hydroelectric project. So for that, we always believe that the best replacement for trash, uh, for lifting of those trash is the trash handling mechanism that should be on the intake. These are some glimpses of our rope different mechanism. If you